In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about A2P, how to submit it, and how to get verified. That way you can start sending text messages with your retail agent today. And what we want to do is head over to our dashboard. We're going to click on phone numbers. Now, you need to have a Twilio number in your account. If you don't have one, you can simply purchase one by clicking the plus, buying a new number here. You can select from one of the area codes here, or you can type an area code here to purchase one of those numbers. And then after you do that, simply select that number and we want to click on SMS. This is where we're going to be setting up our A2P. And for those that are not aware or you might not know, A2P stands for application of person, meaning that we're going to have an app in this case, it's going to be our AI agent that's going to be communicating with the person, right? Someone that has a 10 digit uh, phone number. So the first thing we need to do is select profile. We're going to want to create a business profile. And there's a couple of pieces of information that we need to fill out. Please make sure that this information is accurate. This is what's going to be used to get your phone number approved to send text messages. And the first decision you need to make here is whether you have an EIN, meaning you have a corporation or you don't, right? So if you have an EIN or something equivalent to them, you want to select the appropriate business type, which is either going to be like uh, an LLC, a, a corporation, it could be a nonprofit, right? Any of these. Now, if you don't have an EIN, you want to select sole proprietorship here. So that's going to be one of the, the key differences there. Again, if you have an EIN, you're going to want to select what's appropriate, which is typically going to be any of these. And if you don't have one, you're going to select sol uh, solo proprietorship here. So we want to make sure that we fill out all of our business information here. Now, what I've done here is I completed all of my business information. I selected my business name along with the business type. For the industry, just select what's going to be closest to your current business, the specific uh, industry for your particular business might not necessarily show up here. So you just need to select what's going to be closest to it. For my example, I simply select the technology. And then here, because I'm based on the US, I'm going to be using a EIN number. Uh, and same thing for the region for operation, it's also going to be in US. So I selected that region there, I did enter a business registration number, this one is just fake, it's just so you can get an idea. I enter my website and my physical address. And I also added a, a representative for this business. So you can see that I've added uh, my name, I added my title along with my phone number and my contact and my email address. Now you can add a second representative to this business if you need to. I find that one is, is plenty. So I'm just going to keep this like this. Now I'm going to click on save. And this is going to take me to the next step. So you can see that this is now in review and I can simply select this business profile. You can create more. Um, typically you're only going to have one per workspace. So you can see that this is in review and I'm just simply going to select that business profile there. So now it's going to take me to the second portion, which where I'm going to be doing my brand registration. And when I click on this, this is going to show me two options. So I can either do what's called a low volume standard, meaning I'm going to send fewer than uh, 6,000 message segments per day, or I'm going to send more than that, right? So between 6,000 and 400,000 per day. Now, a good way to kind of test this out and kind of determine what your typical message length is going to be, because again, this is message segments, not necessarily characters, right? So it's, it's slightly different. And I'm going to show you a great tool for that. So here we can see that I've written this message and it actually tells me exactly how many segments this is going to be, right? You can tell that um, this is more. You can see that as I continue to add more text to this, the segments or the characters, right? You can see all of the different segments are continuing to increase. So this is very good because again, it's going to give you a good idea in terms of how many segments you're going to be sending, determining on the average length of your messages. So fantastic tool. Now I'm going to go back and for my particular use case, because I know I'm not going to be sending a whole lot of text messages, I'm going to select this low standard. This is plenty for me. Um, I don't expect to be sending more than 6,000 message segments per day. The next part is going to be the company type. If you public or private, just simply select whatever applies to you. In my instance, it's going to be private. So I'm going to click save. And of course, it's going to give me a warning that I can only create one um, brand 
per business profile, which is completely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit. Now that's submitted, you can see that I can no longer change that. It's uh, kind of like grayed out a little bit, so I can't actually select that anymore. Next is going to be my campaign registration. So I'm going to click on add campaign. Now, the first thing is going to be uh, adding an application name. This is really for your purposes. This is more internal. So here I'm going to call this maybe uh, application or appointment reminders. You can call this uh, really anything that you like. This is again, more for you. Now, the next part is select a use case. And there are many use cases available. This is really going to depend on how you plan on using uh, this particular phone number to send text messages to your customers. So you can see that we can do things from like 2FA to customer support, delivery notifications, uh, marketing, polling and voting. There's a couple of different options here. Now, regardless of the option that you pick, you are going to have to provide a description of how these text messages are going to be used along with some samples and then an end user consent, which I'm going to show you how to fill out all this information. Now, typically I like to use marketing. And the reason I like to use marketing is because even though I might just be sending uh, appointment reminders and confirmations from time to time, I will also be sending things like promotions, right? Like offers, maybe I'm trying to reactivate uh, old customers and things like that. So that's very common to do. And for that, I'm going to be using marketing. But again, you can select from any of these use cases, please select what's more applicable to you. Again, I typically go with marketing because I like to have that flexibility. So I'm going to go with marketing. Next, I need to add a description of how I'm planning to use these text messages. So I've added my description here. You can see that I, I provided as much information as I could. Um, you know, I'm saying that this is going to be for appointment information and I'm planning on sending confirmation reminders to customer. Uh, they also see they might get promotional and notification SMS from us. So pretty simple, very straightforward. The next part is going to be to include some sample text messages as it relates to this particular campaign. So you can see that I've added my sample messages and there's a couple of components that are going to be important. And typically you're going to want to include these with any sample messages. Again, this is going to vary slightly depending on the use case, but it's generally good practice. So some of the components is identifying who we're sending this to. So in this example, it's going to be Jenny identifying myself, uh, which is a person sending this text message and then what business am I sending this from, right? So you can see that one, we have the end user, Jenny, I am identifying myself, and then I'm identifying the business. The other thing is we are giving a way for the user to opt out or stop receiving these text messages, which we've clearly laid out here. The rest of it, right, we're just essentially letting know uh, the user, the purpose of the text message, which is to confirm um, their appointment or remind them about their appointment. And then here I have a slightly different variation. You can see that the same principles still apply. I still have the person, right? So I'm still identifying the end user. I'm identifying myself and my business. I'm letting them know what this text message is about. And I'm also including a website link, right? So this could be like a place where they're going to be rescheduling an appointment. And of course, I have the opt out language there. Now for the end user consent, you can see that this is a little bit longer and I've included a little bit more information. What's important here is that you explain clearly how users opted in or how they chose to receive these messages, right? So here I'm saying, you know, users went to our website, they selected a checkbox, they agreed to receive these text messages. They could also do it by maybe sending a text message. So that could be another way. And then here I included a sample opt-in message, right? So this is what the user is going to receive once they have opted in to our uh, SMS. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind here, especially when adding a website, please make sure that whatever website you're adding and if whatever form is on that website that's requesting or, or uh, getting this authorization from the end user has a disclosure. So let me show you an example. Here you can see that in this form, I'm saying and that the user is checking a box, right? So it's very, very clear and uh, that we have permission from this user. You can see that they're agreeing to receiving marketing text messages from retail AI at the phone number that they have provided. And of course, they can always opt out. So what's very important is to let them know what, they're, what they can expect to receive from who, so I'm saying retail, and then give them a way to opt out. I also have a privacy policy in terms and conditions. So this is very important. Again, you want to have this sort of disclosure in those forms that users are filling out. 
And that's pretty much it. I have all of my information. I have all my sample messages and everything else. So all you got to do is click save. And now, of course, this is going to be telling me that it's rejected because I submitted bogus information. So that's totally expected. But you're going to be doing this with legitimate business information. So that's not going to happen. Let me show you a sample of what it's going to look like once it's been approved. So here you can see that this particular profile has been approved. The company got approved, the campaign got approved, and the phone number got approved. And once this is approved, you can simply continue to do this for additional phone numbers, right? You don't have to keep going over this uh, every single time that you get a phone number, as long as it's within the same workspace and within the same sort of uh brand and campaign right so i can select another phone number here for example you can see that sms is not enabled in this one but because i've already submitted my information all i got to do is simply select my business profile you can see that this one has been approved uh the other ones are in review right or for if it's rejected i'll let you know but i can simply select my approved business profile now for the brand registration, it's always going to default to whatever you selected previously in the beginning stages, right? So I can change that. However, though, I can always submit a new campaign. You can see that I have a couple of campaigns that have been rejected. That's totally fine. And I, here I already have one that is approved. So because I already have this approved, all I got to do is select it and I'm going to click next. And just like that, I can submit another profile. Now, because again, this has already been approved, it makes it much simpler and I can continue to get more phone numbers to send text messages. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, this is the exact process that you would use to get your A2P and your phone number verified to allow you to send text messages. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you.